and gentlemen to an all-new reaction and review tonight guys I'm checking out a sci-fi film from 2009 that movie is Star Trek now I've heard a lot of people talk about this movie and one of the things I've heard a lot about is that apparently fans of the classic Star Trek franchise are not a fan of this and when, and when I say the classic franchise I mean the classic series next gen DS9 and to a vastly lesser extent Voyager and Enterprise not as well as the movies that tie into the original series and next gen apparently fans of, of those don't care for this one because apparently it's vastly different well I have been a Star Trek fan almost my entire life and I've all and I've I've also been a fan of other you know franchises who have had movies recently that were vastly different from anything that came before, including Transformers and GI Joe and Dragon Ball. So I have no problem with films being a being a little bit different. I pretty much know this thing is going to be vastly different from anything I've seen before in terms in in terms of in terms of Star Trek. So I'm not so I'm not wondering if this thing is going to be you know similar similar to any previous movie or you know show. I'm wondering if it's going to be any good and the only way I'm gonna find out if it is any good is if I shut up and I push play and I'm gonna do that right now so without further ado it's time to kick back relax and check out Star Trek okay guys you know I am I am used to really goofy goofy looking alien races in Star Trek but there is one of these medical officers. She has these gigantic bug eyes. It's just really beginning to just like creep me out a little bit. It just looks so fucked up and weird. And I totally understand that that this officer is probably not going to be seen again for the rest of the film. It's just, God damn it, man, she just looked weird. Is that a starship shaped salt shaker? Oh my God, it is. You know, guys, now there is a lot of nerdy shit a person could, could buy. I really think that at the top of the list would be starship-shaped salt and pepper shakers, and now all of a sudden, I would kind of like to own those. That looked really fucking cool. You know, guys, that is probably one of the sneakiest ways I think anyone has ever been able to sneak on board a Federation star starship without just blatantly stowing, stowing on board. In fact, that also was incredibly clever. I am really liking Bones in this movie, guys. He's really fucking awesome. Okay, guys, I heard a lot of people joke about the absolutely retarded amount of lens flare in this movie. And I was and I was not willing to take any of it seriously, but after looking at these shots of the of the bridge, there is an absolutely unnecessary, retarded, and almost amateurish amount of lens of fucking lens flare here, and it makes the whole movie look like absolute shit. I just kinda wanted to share that, guys. Wow, that honestly was not shocking at all. We just had a fucking red shirt die. Well, maybe not a red shirt, more like a red space suit die, but still, it fucking counts. It was a really awesome reference, too. I fucking love that. Oh my god, Nero. Nero has the slugs from Wrath of Khan. Except they're bigger and far, far uglier. Oh, and they go in your mouth instead of in, in instead of in your ear. Well, that isn't nearly as creepy as the ones in Khan, but still, that's really cool. Okay, guys, um, I believe I have a favorite character now. Scotty in this movie is fucking awesome, guys. I'm really, really liking him. Okay, guys, um, I just sort of want to say this right now. 
I really do not like Nero as a villain. I genuinely find him to be less threatening and evil and more just kind of sh shitty. And I totally know that I'm going to go into more detail when the when the movie's done. I just kind of I just kind of wanted to let you guys know right now. I am not digging him as a character like in the slightest. Well, guys, that was Star Trek. Let me shut that off. Okay. Let's talk about the movie, shall we? Before I actually talk about the film itself, um, at the very start of this video, I mentioned that a lot of people have told me and I've read on a whole lot of websites that this movie is not really for traditional Trek fans. And to all those people and to all those websites, I want to call bullshit right now. I've been a Star Trek fan for as long as I can remember. And I'm going to tell you right now, this movie was awesome. I greatly enjoyed this this movie. Mind you, mind you, this movie's got a whole lot of flaws and a whole lot of faults, but it's still a really good movie when all is said and done. But now I have to try to explain why. Let's talk about the writing. First of all, one thing which is probably going to throw a lot of people off is, is a whole lot of the science going on in this movie, especially things involving black holes. I'm, go I'm going to tell you right now, even though I'm not exactly an expert on, on black holes, everything which is done here seems just a little bit odd, especially since um, at the very end I'm not going to try to spoil much, but we have a black hole which is which is close enough to Earth to wipe out, to, to basically wipe out a ship which is drilling a hole into Earth from Earth orbit. And yet the black hole is not powerful enough to suck in Earth. That seems way off to me. However, I'm willing to look past that because, frankly, when it comes to, because, frankly, guys, when it comes to the Star Trek fran franchise, it basically has been living and breathing off of incredibly sketchy science for over 50 years now. I am not, I am not about to complain now. So even though it's going to throw up, throw, even, if, even though it's going to throw a few people off, I am totally willing to understand and I know why, why it is as sketchy as it is. It's as sketchy as it is because it's, Star Trek. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that honestly is going to throw off a couple of people, even though I didn't mind it. Uh, our characters here are written are written incredibly well. At least the characters who um, who I should who I should say that like longtime Trek fans are going to know about. I'm talking about Kirk, Spock, Bones, Uhura, Scotty, Sulu, Chekhov, all those guys, and also Pike are all written very very well. Uh, it's just when we get to our one new character, Nero. Um, I really cannot put my finger on it. I really don't know if it was his dialogue, which kind of, which did kind of suck. Don't know if it was the acting. I'm going to get to the acting in just a moment. But there was just something about Nero I didn't like. And I want you guys to just think about this for a, for a moment. A movie which should, by all rights, have a threatening villain, a threatening, also possibly likable villain in some way. Uh... You 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 almost need that in order for a movie to work. This thing has a villain who's whiny and is just an irritating pile pile of shit, and yet this thing is still able to wind up being absolutely amazing, guys. That is that is an absolutely Herculean task that I didn't think any movie would be able to do. Well. J.J. Abrams has shown that you can have a movie which should by all rights have a decent villain and still be halfway decent when your villain is whiny and irritating and shitty. Now, let me, let me, let me try to talk about Nero without spoiling too much of the movie. Um, I guess that to me, Nero, as I've stated already, he comes off as incredibly whiny because he has a backstory which, granted, we have seen done numerous times in the whole world of Star, a fucking, a fucking Star Trek, and perhaps maybe that, and perhaps maybe that's why I don't care about it because we've seen this sort of thing done in previous movies, previous shows. It's been done, and it's been done far better. Uh, but also every, but also this character is supposed to be absolutely angered and enraged and you know bitter about everything that has happened to him, which is why he does what he does here. The problem is that the dialogue and also the acting that goes along with that dialogue does not sound or even feel bitter or you know full of rage. It actually feels and sounds a hell of a lot more like a four-year-old pitching a temper tantrum. 
And uh, really, guys, if there is any point in the fucking writing which just dips off, it's everything involving, involving Nero. We honestly have here a really strong movie that has an absolutely shitty villain, and the movie is still good. I did not think that would ever be possible. I just want to say that again. Now, I'm talking about the acting for Nero, so why don't I say this right now? Um, this is the second movie I've seen, at least that I know of, that had that had Eric fucking Banna in it at all. The other film was Hulk, and I didn't like his acting there either when he was playing as Bruce Banner. Or was it David Banner? And I don't fucking care. The whole Hulk series is kind of fucked up. Anyway, as Banner and as Nero, I have learned that Eric Banna is not able to act. Or correction, he can, but the best he can pull, the best he can pull out of his ass is a barely passable showing. And by barely passable, I mean every single line is either whining or it's a four-year-old pitching pitching a temper tantrum. He cannot he cannot show anger. The man is incapable of showing rage on camera. And every character I've seen him play are characters who should be so full of fucking rage it's not even funny. But no, no. He honestly he honestly was able to turn the Hulk into a fucking whiny mess. He turns Nero into a fucking whiny mess. I never want to see Eric Bana in another film again where he has to show anger. The man is incapable of doing so. And once more, that actually is a massive, 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 like, pothole amongst the rest of the cast who turn in fantastic showings. This thing honestly would probably have been better if they honestly, if they honestly would have written, you know, Nero a little bit better, and if they would have cast somebody competent in the fucking role um however though everything else though like and like and the rest of the cast has to fucking compensate for this and the rest of the cast is able to put on a fantastic show especially since they have to carry you know banna who basically is dragging the movie down um so yeah guys writing here is awesome minus you know nero acting is awesome minus nero it's very very weird guys i'm just gonna say that right now Camera work. I remember a lot of people uh, when this film first first came out, and it was actually one of the reasons why I've been trying. I, I've been kind. Of, I, I was kind of avoiding it for years. It was all the talk of lens flare, and about how there's just so fucking much. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is, and it makes the movie look horrible. And the worst part is, guys, is that I know, I can tell that all of these shitty. Lens flares are there on purpose. Why? Because those same lens flares are there whenever whenever we see CG. Whenever they are out in space and we see lights on the ship, the lights are giving off lens flares. When characters when characters are being are being fucking transported, there is lens flare popping off of the visual effect that goes over them as they are fucking transporting. I want somebody to inform to inform J.J. Abrams that the that the object of making a movie is not to overload it with fucking lens flares, especially when you're putting them in there digitally. The object is not to have lens flare at all. If you want your film to look good, if you want your film to look like you know a fucking professional film, you avoid lens lens flare. And for the love of fuck, you don't put them in on purpose. I know that there's a sequel, and I hope and pray to all of the gods above that J.J. Abrams pulled his head out of his ass long enough while making the second one to understand that lens flare is not a good thing. And if I see any, and if I see this much lens flare in Star Trek Into, you know, Darkness, which, by the way, I'm going to tell you right now, I am going to be reviewing a little later on this month. If I see as much lens flare there as here, I'm going to hunt down Abrams and I'm going to fucking gouge his eyes out with a broken light bulb just because the motherfucker does not d does not deserve to see if he thinks that lens flares are a good thing. Now, minus the lens flare problem, <laughs> camera work here is fantastic. <laughs> wow, I have never been that angry over something as stupid as lens flares in my entire life. Wow.
Anyway, camera work is awesome. It really is, minus the, you know, fucking lens, minus the lens flares, which also uh, factors into lighting as well, because, well, you know, because, well, you know, you have to have the lights there and the lights have to be bright enough to give off, you know, lens flare unless they're all in there digitally, at which point I want somebody to hunt down and beat J.J. Abrams with a fucking bat. Anyway, <laughs> camera work here is good. The lighting here is good. I'm just going to have to move on because I'm just going to keep on going after the fucking lens, lens flares. I just have to stop. Okay. The score, the soundtrack, the, the, well, first of all, as some of you may have guessed, I always like to sort of, you know, differentiate the score from the soundtrack. The score is anything that just plays in the background. The soundtrack is, is any kind of proper music, licensed music that is used in the movie. And here, uh, I believe that the soundtrack is made up of Sabotage by the uh, Beastie Boys, which we hear as a young Kirk is just driving around in this absolutely beautiful classic car. Uh, so yeah, guys, the soundtrack made up of one song is fucking awesome. And the score is great. The score is the, the fucking, you know, score is absolutely powerful. And it really does sound like a big budget version of, of the score we would have heard in the classic Star Trek series. Which, mind you, is still different from, from the scores we heard in the classic Star Star Trek movies. This thing here was totally shooting more for more for the kind of music we heard in the show as opposed to what was in the movies, which I am all for. That actually was a really nice, nice touch. Special effects. I want to talk about the special effects. I'm going to say right now, again, there's fucking, there's fucking lens flare in there, and J.J. Abrams should be fucking ashamed. Anyway, special effects, though, beyond the lens flares, are awesome. They really are. Special effects here are absolutely top-notch, fantastic, beautiful stuff, guys. These are some of the nicest effects I've seen in, seen in a long time. Uh, and they would probably have looked better once more if those fucking lens flares weren't put in to damn near every goddamn shot. Anyway, uh, so, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Star Trek? Oh, fuck yes. I'm totally able to recommend this thing, guys. This movie, even though it has a whole lot of faults, even though it has a whole lot of flaws, you can totally look past every single one of them and wind up seeing an act you wind up seeing a fantastic movie. This thing is awesome, and I'm really happy that I picked it up. It technically came free when I bought Star Trek Into Darkness because they were packaged together, and it was it was it was a kind of like a discounted price. I was really happy to see that. And as and as far as free movies go, fuck this thing here is awesome. So yeah, guys, if you haven't seen this thing, by all means check it out. It is amazing. I'm really hoping that. I'm really hoping that the sequel is as good, but I will find out a little later on this month. So yes, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Live long and prosper.